Here we are back with the Big Life Podcast and a phenomenal guest that I've uh, been wanting to interview for quite a while. So it's, this is so fun for me always doing, uh, I said, the shows because I'm curious and intrigued about the stuff that you'll share. You know, so this is this is always dope. Uh, Mike, Mike Dola from Stronger You, like, it's such a pleasure having you on the show, my friend. Dude, thank you, Luca. I'm happy to be here, man. And um, man, it's uh, here's here's the thing. I, I kind of mentioned it right before we we went on, but there's 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 these two kind of uh, buckets that I really want to dive into. I mean, you built a company um, that helps people change their nutrition sustainably, and you know, you kind of great story. I, by the way, if anybody wants to dig much deeper, please do, because because you went from you know working a job kind of like ah, I don't know what I want to do. To, to then building, you know, and obviously it wasn't overnight, but building this extremely successful um, company. And, the, you know, the first part I want to do is like, as you built this company, like for anybody in a, in a fitness space, I said it about five or six years ago. And I said, in five or six years, you, you like, you won't be able to be a, you know, fitness coach trainer without the skill set of nutrition coaching. It's like, you'll be a relic. You know, you just can't, you just can't show up and not help people with these different components uh, of their life to get them sustainable results. And you, you did such an incredible job of helping so many people, um, by the way, with not a lot of, and, and I've been around for a long time in this industry. Um, I never saw ads for you guys, which we'll talk about later too. Um, and it was a lot of, I mean, just word of mouth and referrals and just the success stories. But my first thing is like, if you had to zoom out and be Yoda and share like, over all these, you know, tens of thousands of clients that you've had, what have you found were the principles that help people, you know, get results, sustainable results? Again, I, I got to say sustainable because there's so much bullshit out there. That's the quick fix stuff. Yeah, it's it's interesting because we're always talking about sustainable, but it um it's like a different thing, right? Like the the methods to lose fat aren't necessarily the methods to like maintain. So like in terms of sustainability, like it was always the planners that were doing well. Uh, the people that would always think ahead, who wouldn't get flustered when these little uh, obstacles would come up, like life happens, like somebody would take their lunch at work and they would, you know, they either react poorly or react positively and make a change and adjust on the fly. So these are like the the basic things. It was like the planners that were doing the best. It was the people that had the good support systems around them. Uh, I, I find that People struggle when they have a group of people around them that aren't supporting their goals, no matter what it is. Um, so like the the husbands and the wives and the partners and the friends and the coworkers, those are those are your teammates with nutrition. So like these are things that coaches like our coaches would even dig into, which is like finding what is the support system that you have? What are the challenges close to you that you have? And how can we knock those things down? And I'm sure there's a lot we can talk about regarding that, but Really, it's the ones that they don't make things too difficult for themselves. They don't restrict too many things. They don't have too many food rules. They just have kind of like structure and guardrails. And they're somewhat flexible. They're patient. Like all the basic things, right? The, and the thing is, so structure is a big one. It's funny because like I always say, what's the number one habit, you know, to instill? And it's like, well, I call it plan, prepare, cook. You know, it's just like before you do the X's and O's, it's like if you can't actually have a plan for what you're going to do the next day, um, and or for the week, you know, whether it's cooking or where you're going to eat out, what are you going to eat that you're already kind of starting at this disadvantage, right? So that structure and that planning is such a key. Now, here's, here's my question though, like, because so many folks, you know, I I'm wondering from, you know, when your coaches got people, which is a lot of people, right. That came in and didn't have that, right. Cause mm -hmm. naturally there's people that are like, I'm really organized. Uh, I mean, like I, I, I got one client that's like, it's, it's, it's an extreme outlier, right? But she's like tracked her MyFitnessPal for like 3,200 days straight. Yeah. And it's like, you know, it makes my head explode because I can never do that. But that's not the the average person. And so those people that are not planners and they come in, you know, how do you go about starting to instill some of these uh, habits and behaviors that are going to help them succeed to for them to buy into it, right? So it doesn't go back to like, you know what, well, Mike, it's been three weeks, you know, last time I did this in three weeks, I was already down eight, nine pounds. You know, this time it's like, I'm stuck or I got one pound down. Like, how do you get the buy-in for people to go like, okay, like th this is what I'm going to stick to. I believe, right? Like I'm bought into this principle uh, that you guys are talking about. Yeah. I, I think everyone will do the thing that seems like it has value. 
So I think when a lot of coaches are like, you got to play and you got to do this, you got to do that. They don't really tell people why it's important or how to do it. So like with tracking, things like that, it's like, well, the challenge for most people who don't want to track or don't want to plan is that they don't see the value in doing those things. They don't see the value in tracking and planning that solves their issue of, which is a lack of knowledge. So when we talk to people and we say, hey, like here, here's the challenge, here's the issue. If we get the information from the tracking and the planning, we can solve your lifelong problem in a matter of weeks. Is that something you would try? And they start trying it and you show them how to do it. And a lot of people are intimidated by these apps, you know, my fitness pal, chronometer, whatever they're they're using. And we just have little guides and little touch points. The coaches would help them do it and they would succeed. I, I think there's just this intimidation factor, just like fitness stuff where people see maybe the, maybe they see a video you guys post and they're like, oh, I could never do that. But then you show them how to do it and they're like, wow, this is cool. This is fun. Now I have my answer. Now I feel great and I'm going to keep doing it and compound on these feelings. Yes. Yeah, and that's the thing is like the building up the confidence of, oh, okay. I always say it's like you shine a light on a scary thing and it's mm -hmm. not that scary anymore or, or the fear goes away. But it, but if you, so the approach, if you looked at, you know, the amount of people, because this is a question that keeps coming up, right? When you say the word tracking, or when I say the word tracking to a new client, they have a already preconceived picture of what that means they go like oh my god dude like mm -hmm. so i gotta scan the codes for my food right and it's like so what was the approach because i i found that um actually alan aragon shares this cool story but you know he goes speak at a nutrition seminar like i don't know 500 people in the room and he goes and these are fit pros right nutrition yeah. coaches fit pros and he goes how many people here, you know, track their food? You know, it's like 15 to 20 percent of the room goes up. He goes and he says, Okay, you guys are fit pros, and there's only like you know, eight out of uh, two out of ten ish. Like your clients is gonna be significantly less than that, right? Um, yep. and so what did you find when it comes to even just uh, the story about tracking of clients? And how did you approach it when people are like, you know what, I don't want to be in my phone constantly calculating things. Yeah, it, it's one of those things that people, they choose what the definition is. And I'm I'm kind of controversial in today's landscape. I was a big uh, proponent of tracking macros for people because it was so educational. It was like mm -hmm. forced education for people. So a lot of clients and a lot of coaches even now are like, oh, they don't need to do that. And I say, well, it knocks over a lot of the hurdles that these people have. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know what the anatomy of food is in terms of carbs, fats, protein, calories, micronutrients. So this is like the way that is going to get them from point A to point B. They may not want to do it at first, but again, I'll show them the, the value of doing it and how easy it can be and how you adjust over time. Maybe you go from all three macros to just calories and protein, and then maybe you just go to protein and that's it. Yes. And this is, these are like the steps people can take. And it's funny. Cause like if Alan asked a group of people, like if they track food, maybe a bunch of those people used to track, like I don't track anything now because I tracked in the past and I got that yeah. education. So like, it was almost like, if you don't want to do any of this stuff, we'll figure out a way that you can succeed here, but I'm going to try to force you in the nicest way possible to do the thing that works because I know if you do it, you're not going to have to do 50 other silly diets the rest of your life. <laughs> yeah. So that's I it. It's like, you don't want to do the hard thing at first, but it's going to save you from potentially years of misinformation and nonsense. I, I think basically what, you know, what you end up breaking it down to, to me, tracking is, you know, what, first of all, aligning it with their goal and then breaking it down into a practice, but hiding it. As I always say, like, it's, it's like to my dog, right? I got to, I got to give the dog like a pill, but it's, mm -hmm. it's in the peanut butter. You know what I mean? Yeah, it, it's, it's crush, but it's like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to hide this skill set practice and attach it to something that is meaningful to you. And the, I, I love what you said, because that's something that we do a lot where it's like, Hey, it might just be, you know, calories and pro to me, it's like, those are the top two, right? Calorie, right, right. Calories and protein, but to get people to understand, you know, Hey, get 30 to 40 grams of protein with every meal. What is that? Like, what does that look like? And for them to track it, it creates so much, first of all, the knowledge of like, holy shit, I'm under eating so dramatically. And, oh, this is what 30, 40 grams of protein looks like in lean ground beef and beef and chicken. And right. I mean, it's an education. And if they can, like, if they, that's the only thing they did in three months, they're like, 
they're they're already way better. I mean, they, they're probably sure. like lost weight, feeling better, feeling fuller. You know, cravings are are, are improved. It, and it's like, how can you just dissect it down? For for each person, is going to be different. And I mean, because this, I, I know this, and I, I'm going to kind of skip forward and then um, come back to it. But you did, you guys do did a lot of individual coaching because I, I know this is a big part of it, like the accountability and the support part. But how did that look like um, when it comes to like, hey, I'm a client at Stronger You, it like somebody is responsible for me and they're looking at all my stuff. Is that how the approach would be? Yeah, basically these these people would sign up almost entirely through word of mouth. Like you said, we didn't have ad, ads. Uh, when I sold and you know we tried to grow a little bit that way, we started doing the ads. But prior to that, we had nothing. Uh, they would come through the virtual door. They would fill out an intake form with a bunch of basic information, um, things like dieting history, stuff like that, just so we knew like what their experience was. And then we would match them up with one of the coaches that we thought would be a good fit. Uh, luckily, we had, you know, at the peak, probably like 80 something coaches at once. So we basically had a coach for any single individual that you could imagine. Um, we would match them up, they would get in contact, you know, usually that day, I was very, I was kind of like a crazy person about like how quickly we would get people. I, I love like that. It's such a big, such a big point. We'll come back to that. I, I would, that. yeah, I'm such a lunatic and I was a micromanager and I know all that stuff was crazy for people, but I, I know it was important for our customers. Um, because in this field, like people want, they want results quickly. And that in their head is I need to get started with a coach quickly. So I got them set up quickly with the, with the coaches, they would get them all the information. They'd have like initial contact. They'd set up some macronutrients based on uh, the conversations. And then they would have, until we had our app developed, we had like basic spreadsheet. It was like macros, weight, waste, workouts, sleep, um, how are you feeling like in terms of hunger, energy, um, and then general notes, like how did the day go? They would submit that weekly to the coach. They would open it up. They would review it. They would make adjustments, provide feedback, answer questions. And in addition to that, they could, they could text the coach whenever they want. So that's like a scary term for a lot of coaches. They're like whenever yeah. they yep. want, but yes, like I know it sounds crazy, but this was the service I wanted to give to people. And I don't think it was wrong to give them that level of access. Like our phones weren't ringing at 1 a.m. You know what I mean? It was like a random Tuesday. Someone would say, hey, I got a surprise dinner coming up at this restaurant. What can I do? And that's like the things that our coaches were, were so good at is answering these questions that people have. Like they're not, they're not asking the crazy deep science that like you'll see at like a medical conference. They're trying to help people navigate like this crazy food environment. And that's what I think we were really good at. You know, I want to shine a light on that because there, there's been so much of this now where, by the way, like when you zoom out, like, and you say, my goal is to help this person succeed. And then you go, okay, what is going to help that person succeed? And things like, well, they can reach out to me at times that they need the help. Usually, again, it's not going to be yep. like two o'clock in the morning, right? Uh, right? Unless you're like out there and you're an outlier. Maybe, but like, yeah. It's going to be like, hey, I'm struggling with this right now. But that's the support that they need. And what I've seen a lot in industry happen is, is where it's like the boundaries, uh, uh, I would say. Now, and boundaries can be wrapped up in like laziness to me, to be honest yeah, with yep, you, right? It's yep. like, you got to have your boundaries. And it's like, look, I've had coaches to go like, well, I don't want to work these hours. I said, listen, um, in, in the fitness industry, people usually train before and after work. If right. you're not willing to work at those times, you're not going to be packed and you're not going to be super successful you know, uh, unless you're training boomers at 11 to one too, but like it's, there's just a requirement for that. And the same thing, you know, that's why I love that you brought that up. It's like, these folks need help. And right. here, here's the way to help them the most. So this is what we do because I, I know that this, this kept coming up is the accountability portion, right? Cause if you give people the excess nose, but you take away the support and accountability, you know, then you are in the current landscape of where we are in a, as a country, which is no bueno. Right. Um, and, and so I, I love that. And we're going to dig more into, you know, how you did the accountability part, but like, I, I, and I can't remember where I read this, but it was like bigger to challenge, the bigger the support has to be. And, you know, when you, when you buy an ebook and it's like, here's your exact plan, big yeah. challenge, zero support, mm -hmm. you know, that's going to fail except for maybe some very committed organized people. It's like outliers, a couple percent, but the majority, like you need guidance, you need co coaching, you need support, you need accountability. And that's, that's what gets you there 
Right. Um, th- that's th- it. Th- you don't, you don't, as a coach, give people what you want to give them. You give them what they need. And that's kind of what the, the, the shortfallings of the industry is as a whole, especially like the fad diets. They're just like, here, go do this. And it's like lonely as hell. So when mm-hmm. I'm thinking of developing stronger, you as a program, I'm thinking, what are the problems that people have? What can I plug in to solve those problems? Not what does Mike want to do for a job? How can Mike and his crew save these people and fix their problem? And a lot of that was more support for better prices than other people. Hey, that's, you know, that's such a, a great, like that's going to have to go into the show notes because it's like, you have to start the company. Like I, I see people starting a company uh, going like, what lifestyle do I want to build? Now, listen, yeah. that's later, fine. later, later. Worry yes, about it later. Like, yeah. Absolutely. If you start with that, you go like, uh, Hey, I need this. You're like, yeah, listen, I don't work Friday, Saturday, Sunday, or, yep. you know, Thursdays after three. <laughs> it's like, okay, well, this is what the people need. And, yep. and so I think that's an important part of it. Well, how, how like, at the evolution, let's look at like the end product that you were the most happy with, right? What were the things that the clients got from support? Just if you were going to, going to look at like the features and benefits, I'd, I'd, I'd love to know that. Yeah, it was, it was really accessible, caring problem solvers. Like people could just mm-hmm. submit their spreadsheet or do it on the app. When we finally created the app, they could talk to their coach basically whenever they wanted or needed. And they had an amazing community. And that was like the secret sauce, the community, which was like a group of at, at its peak, like 25,000 people in a Facebook yeah. group who all wanted to see each other succeed. And it was like, when I think back of like, like being the puppet master of the group, it was like, I'm pulling the strings to get people to help strangers and basically get like dopamine from helping via like shares and comments and likes and becoming friends with all these people and it was so cool because like diets and fitness it's so lonely and we wanted to create a community that was just like people were cool as hell to each other solving each other's problems basically becoming the assistant coach so our coaches could handle even more clients because the clients could get so much information and so much help from their peers who i always say are like some of the most educated people Yep. that aren't even in the fitness industry. They're just by osmosis, by being around these coaches and me and all the, their colleagues that have maybe been there for a couple of years now, they're answering the questions just like I would answer them. And it's like, so it's here, so cool to see that. that that's amazing. And it's, it, it's a superpower. Now, this is the thing that's difficult to do. Is there things that you're like, that you strategically intentionally did to get that? Because to get a Facebook community and just a community in general, yep to become very engaged, right? They, 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 it means something to them. So when somebody says something, they're like, I'm going, like, I'm going to help them out. And you got all these people helping them out. And it's like, damn, like we just built all these coaches. I always give an analogy of Martin Rooney taught me this when we do group classes and especially we do these massive charity events and there's 160 people or 150 people. And what you do, you know, you, you break it up and let's say we go 30 seconds on 30 seconds off, but one person is coaching their partner. So now I just turn, you know, 75 people into trainees and I got 75 assistant coaches Mm -hmm. and the place is bananas, you know, and I'd go like, Hey, listen, man, coach that person. Like you'd want to be coached, like bring the energy, support them. They're going to support you back. And, you know, people would come in and go like, what the hell is going on? And, but, but that was a strategic intentional uh, framework to, to create a better atmosphere, connect people. Cause there'd be a bunch of new people and they meet up and at the end they're like Mm -hmm. friends. Right. So like how, for instance, how to do that? Um, do you have any tips and insights with communities, especially that are online where I feel it is a little bit more challenging to do that? Yeah. It's one of those like lead by example things. Like you, you behave how you want everyone else to behave and they just start following like how you respond to people, how quickly you respond to people, what it's like when people get certain responses and how they feel about it. And then just making it a welcoming, fun community. And I think my buddy Adrian has a group right now. It's like fitness nerds or something. Like it's just a bunch of random people that are so damn chill with each other. And he put together this community that I think is one of the best. And I see a lot of like the little clues that like, that like, cause he was around our community and just seeing all these people just like have each other's backs, be friends, not tolerate bullshit. Like that's all it was. It was, it wasn't really a lot of strategy or maybe it was, and I just didn't realize it because I, my like background was 
work in jobs I hated that I actually had internet access to all day that I could be on message boards and just talk to people online. So mm -hmm. like, I just brought that experience to a Facebook group and was like, all right, what, what gets people talking? What makes them feel supportive? What's helpful? And how do I get a bunch of like admins and moderators to help me with this stuff? And a lot of it was just identifying like power users, like some of our members that were just so engaged and happy and maybe they're working a job they didn't love all day and they're just chilling on the Facebook group and they're helping send them t-shirts, send them bottles, send them free stuff, take care of their sessions. And then they just keep helping, keep helping. And then the other members start seeing that, like how good those people feel helping and they start doing it. And it just becomes this infectious, like positivity community. It's, it's kind of wild when you think about it because yeah, Facebook I, I, is crazy. Like put strangers in the same place. <laughs> it gets, it gets crazy, but we didn't, we didn't tolerate that. And I was open about it. So people knew not to cross that, that like rudeness line. So, I mean, so that part of it, I mean, ho hopefully somebody uh, or all of you are taking notes on this because that right there is, is the magic. I mean, so you do have to, you know, obviously you got to have boundaries and be like, nah, we're not going to tolerate yeah. this shit. But yeah. I, I look, you know, you have to have that because otherwise it can get toxic. But the, the other part that I think is really, really helpful is like when you find the power users and you start going like, hey, look, like, let me make your life easy. Let me let me show you appreciation for being and helping in this community. Right. Like, I think that's so important. And anybody can do that. Small business, big business. Um, but because because the kicker is what I've found a lot of times. And, you know, could it be that the magic word is caring? It's the, the the thing is, it's such a fucking fluffy thing, right? Because yeah, yeah. if if I say like, if you care more, what do you do? What well, do you you go a little bit above and beyond? Like you stay a little longer, you do a little more research. You like you always do a little bit more because you give a shit. And which brings me to I, I, that's going to be a big question. You know, how do you how do you get people involved in the company that care? Because if I'm just showing up and going like I'm here for the, uh, whatever I'm get paid per hour per unit per this, oh, it was four p.m. I'm done. You know, it's 404. I'm not answering this question. I'm not doing this extra thing. Like it's it's very, very difficult to do. But when you're doing it and you started the company and you're like, you give a shit and you're like, man, I actually do what I'm love love doing. How do you get people uh involved in that? Is there, I mean, this start kind of starts coming into the building the company part, but um, I'm sure you've made some mistakes too. But like when you look back, you know, what were those? I would say the the hell yeah, I'm glad I did this. Um parts of building the team yeah this this is a it's probably an underwhelming answer because i can't get people to care i just hired people that did care and that was the key was finding the right people at the start and not hoping to develop skills in people that are not a develop like a skill that you can develop like i don't think you can make someone care who doesn't care about people no agreed but yeah, i agreed. i also think if you don't care about the progress of your clients, you're probably a sociopath. Like it, like, dude, I would, I would be in tears in friggin' Starbucks at times, like reading some of these comments from these members. Like, I'm like, I need people like that. And that's where like in our community, we, we did hire a lot of the members that took a, I was going to get to that question. Yep. Took an interest in nutrition and we told them where to get certified. We told them how they basically mentored us in the group and with their coach that they were using. And then we hired them and they were some of the best coaches we've ever had. And some of the industry would say, oh, these people are unqualified or they weren't ready. And it's like, well, what is a coach? Because they're getting better results than almost anyone in this industry. Their satisfaction ratings are higher than anyone in this industry. So are they not some of the best coaches on the planet? You just haven't heard of them. And they were like groomed in our community. And those are the people I hired. Like we only had to let go a couple coaches ever. We've hired over a hundred and we only had to let go a couple who probably just weren't the right fit for our situation. And so going back, like I can't make somebody care. I could just hire people who do. And then I don't have to worry about it. That's that, by the way, that's a nut statistic that you only fired from that many. Yeah. Of you. Actually that speaks volumes for, for the community. But yeah. you know, I'm, I want to piggyback on that because even in, you know, historically over the last 17 years that we've you know between the two gyms like more than 50 percent of our coaches were people that have had a transformation you know they get the fit i mean it, it's meaningful to them right it's such a big mm -hmm. thing then they go do an internship then they coach and while they may not be strong at the beginning on x's nose by the way they, they got a shit ton of deliberate practice of the values and systems 
systems and everything, right? But better, they can run them better than a uh, experienced coach that's coming yep. in. But then my job was the education, the education part and continue to bring them back up on that. But you make a great point. Like who's the better coach, right? right. Okay. This guy's got a PhD. He's gone through all these certs and out of a hundred clients, 75 left. 12 got pretty good results. 13 were like mediocre. You got this other person been in like, for instance, stronger you for two years, had a huge transformation, dug into the, all the, you know, nutrition stuff. Cause they were, they got the bug for it. And out of hundred clients, 50 got amazing results. 80, 80 uh, stayed on board. Like who's, you know, who's better? I, like, yeah. and I, I think it's, it's an ego a, thing. It's yeah, a, it's a absolutely. pride and ego. Just same crap I got when I started. Cause I'm not an RD. I'm a guy that has a few nutrition certifications that just kind of knew what I was talking about. So I had people, I had RDs coming at me. I had PhDs coming at me. Who, who do you think you are to come into this field? You don't know what you're talking about. And like, I, like I'm a competitive person. I, I, I joke that I was raised by Michael Jordan and I, I remember all this stuff. Like I remember who said it. I remember when they said it and I use that as fuel to just do a really good job for my clients and, and kind of hope they're watching. See, I, I have I, a chip I, on my shoulder. <laughs> I love that, man. Like, you know what this, cause this is a, a an ongoing, interesting kind of conversation when it comes to coaching period. And, you know, I mean, I, I'm a geek about it. I love it. More and more. I talk about this, you know, the other, uh, cause, cause I share like, what is actually the definition of coaching? It's, it's a social interaction underpinned by communication. Right. And there's, there's really three things that kind of make it up. I feel like, which is communication, problem solving, and the technical expertise, right? But the truth is, is, you know, you look at people that don't have the highest level technical expertise, and they may be working on it, but they're great at communication and problem solving. They keep clients longer, which means that they're able to change them longer, which means they're going to have mm -hmm. more success. So, and I still see too much of the, by the way, I'm not against it. I actually believe in it significantly, the technical expertise, but if you're super strong here, and weak on these other two, you're like, you're a donor, like you're, you're not going to make it, you know? And I think that what happens is that folks that are really strong in these two, and maybe not as strong here, that the, the people are strong in technical expertise go like, what are you doing here? You know, like, you don't know your shit. And it's like, hold up. What is our mission? Like our mission is not to be like, I'm the smartest guy. Our mission is to help people actually get results. Like that's the win. So you, you need to go back to the drawing board and be like, hey, what am I not good with? And, and, that, and I, that is ego. That is pure ego to go like, I don't give a shit if I'm not getting results. I'm really right. smart, though. Right. It's like, whoa, yeah. hold up. What the are we client doing? doesn't even know what you're saying because you can't communicate it properly. It's like the, the happiest clients are the ones that like their coach the most and they just do so good. So it's like get them to like and trust you. They'll listen to you. They'll follow. They'll refer more people. And then you don't even have to worry about how you're getting your next client. Yeah. Okay. okay. This is a great, great segue because um, how do you even go from, you know, and, and I've read quite a lot of stuff about you building the company from like, uh, you know, one of the things that you look back for is you weren't prepared for it to grow at the rate that it did. Like you didn't, you, you didn't even have a belief that it could get that big yeah. at, initially. Right. But in that phase where you're like, okay, we're coaching, you know, um, uh, however many people, let's say it's 50, right? Mm -hmm. And then it grows and grows. And all of a sudden it's like, hold up, it's hundreds. So what does that process look like? Because I I, I love, you know, looking into the, the challenging things of building the company. It's really easy. Everybody can talk about like, yeah, well, we built it. We did this and we had the app. It's like, no, what about the oh shit moment where <laughs> you're like, hey, this is cool. This is cool. I'm making, I can make a living off of this. Whoa, I got to hire people, create more systems, like walk me through that. Cause I'm really intrigued about that part. Yeah, it was. So pretty much I did, I had my full-time job and I was coaching as the, the only person involved at stronger you for about 13 months. When I quit my job to go full-time, I really thought I was going to have like more free time and I was going to kind of chill and just do my <laughs> thing. And then it just got busy as hell because I think I just put more effort in. It just kind of, you know, started to springboard. Then shortly after that, I fired or fired, I hired four coaches and I was like, all right, I know you guys really well. I know we have the same philosophy regarding nutrition and customer service. You're available. Why don't you come over here? Uh, here's how it's going to work. And then they started to get full. And I was like, oh, crap, I need more coaches. 
So like, I just, I just started, it's kind of weird. Cause I didn't have like this, this grand plan or grand structure. I just react to what was happening over time. And my goal was to never make the customer service suffer. You know, we were very fortunate that it got better over time, but I would just add coaches as we needed. And then there was just additional layers. Like we hired eventually a PhD, one of our members who was a, um, she was a PhD uh, professor at a college in Pennsylvania. She was a member of ours. I was like, Hey, we need help. Like training client, uh, training coaches, having like systems and stuff like that. And she would come in and she would create that stuff. So like I could handle like 20 coaches, no problem. But then after that, it's like, we want to make sure that everything is cool. And we weren't like, I was micromanager in terms of like wording on like Instagram and like how quickly people got back to people. But I didn't care what a coach, like how they coach someone to get from point A to point B. And I think that's why it worked really well. We, we just hired the right people and they did their thing within our framework. So we didn't really have the need for too much oversight. It wasn't like when someone comes like, I don't know, works at like Walmart and you have to teach them every single system. Like these people are already coming in. They know how to coach. They know how to adjust numbers based on feedback and, you know, the biofeedback. So they would just do their thing and we would just multiply. So like we had me, then we had four, then we had eight and 12. And eventually we have, 80 and then we have some more internal departments like admins and things like that to distribute clients and answer questions and stuff like that. So it wasn't like it wasn't like this huge like framework of like systems and stuff like that. It was hire the right people, make sure everyone knows like the customer service standards, everyone has a shared nutrition philosophy, everyone is passionate about caring about these people and then we'll worry about it later. And that's probably not the best business advice for people. But I find that so many people are building businesses backwards. Like we never worried about where we were getting customers from. We worried about like what system or software or whatever we needed later. If we would have built all that stuff in the beginning, we probably wouldn't have ended up scaling and getting the customers to even use that stuff. So it's like you do the things that don't scale early on, then you worry about that stuff later. If customers are coming in and they're happy, you don't have to worry about all that other stuff. That's a great insight. And I, I, I do think, I mean, you're right about this. When I look back, you know, one of the things I said, uh, oh man, I wish I had systems earlier. But the, the truth is, is like you build, you build the systems off of the things, you know, that work. Yeah. And so, so you got to see what works. And if you, I mean, cause you did have boundaries, like for example, if some, so what were the things, if a new coach came on board? What were the things that were like, here's the stuff you do have to know, but apart from that, here's autonomy, like take it away. Yeah. It's like, get, get back to the people, like as soon as you can within the same day, whether it's like a message or a, or a check-in, like don't let stuff sit because people need quick responses because quick responses equal good customer service and care in their mind. So I wanted them to get back to them as soon as possible. Um, like, don't be a jerk. Like that was always the, like the, always the joke, like just don't be an asshole and you're, and you're fine here, you know, be caring, be quick and you're good. And I think giving people so few, like, I guess rules, they just felt like comfortable at work. Like they weren't walking on eggshells worrying about pissing off the boss, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was pretty much it. It's like, you know, the philosophy now just use your voice and get back to them quick and I'm cool. And that's all they did. And it sounds, it sounds so stupid, simple. And it sounds like everyone's just going to be like, I do that. I do that. And it's like, I don't know, maybe, maybe not everyone does do that because we all think we give good service. We all yeah, think we give like, we're quick, but like, I, I wanted to be the quickest. And when I worked with coaches, like in like 2015, 2013, 14, when I was getting started in the industry, like I was, I'm one of those people that you just tell me what to do. I'll, I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll do it. But I knew that type of coaching wasn't good enough for the clients I was going to serve. So I was like, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do things like if they're not happy, I'll give them a refund for time that's not used. Or like I'm not going to hard sell them because I don't want to convince anyone to be in this coaching relationship who doesn't want to be. So it was like, it was very much like, it's, it's what I imagine. And now I'm, I'm married, so I'm out of the dating game. But it's like dating to me. Like you don't look desperate and everything, everything works fine. Like the desperate people are the ones that are like, Oh, I can't find a partner. It's like, just chill, become, 
become the thing that everyone wants to be a part of. And then you don't have to worry about that stuff. Yeah, there's, there's a bunch to unpack. The last thing that you said, yeah. I would bring up this analogy is uh, Matthew McConaughey in his, in his book, Green Lights, had this thing. He's telling a story about when he was uh, trying to get in Hollywood and his mentor is like, hey, listen, you smell like need. You know what I mean? Like, I need this. Yeah. And it's like, you smell like I can smell anybody. Anybody I can smell. It. He's like, go, go to Europe, go on your bike for two, three weeks, come back and like get rid of the need. And he came back and he was chill and was like, no, nah, I don't need any of this stuff. Boom, gets right. his first job, right? And I think that that's true for everything. When people talk about sales, with things about co coaching, I think it's the same thing. But, you know, to, I, I think that you, pro like if you were, if you had a lot of systems and a lot of like, okay, we, we got to do all this onboarding and this, that, and the other, you, you couldn't have grown that fast. No, exactly. So it's like person pays, they sign up. Here, here, coach, here's the email with all the information. Go do your thing next. And it would just repeat, repeat. We didn't have to do all this crazy stuff. And that is like, it, it probably breaks a lot of businesses because it slows them down. It takes their time away from the things that matter. And then they're left with nothing but a, a pretty business that has all the right software and systems. Like we, we were, we became one of America's fastest growing companies with spreadsheet check-ins. Like, uh, like Google sheets, we didn't even have the app at that point. Like you don't need all this stuff. And like when you're starting coaching businesses, it's like, it's so, it's so easy to look at the successful people and say, I need a better website. I need better branding logos. I need eight different softwares that all have a 10 to $50 a month fee. I, I need a, this, I need a marketing person. I need content. It's like, Maybe you just your words and and your your quick words are probably enough. See, I, I, this is this leads me to um. Uh, well, actually, when was the when did you uh, how many years in did you build the app? Um, we it was a funny story. Like we tried to build an app like a couple of years in and had like multiple fails. Just poor project management on my part. Um, crappy vendors. We finally got it. I think it was like twenty twenty, late twenty nineteen or so, so, something like that. So five, six years, five, in. six years. Okay. That, yeah. yeah. That's, that's why I wanted to, to, to bring that up is to say people see how big of a success there was before there was right. the app. Right. And, and you don't, apps are expensive. Like people are like, Oh, yeah. I have an app. I'm like, D I, don't I don't know think, if you do. No, it's, it's, it's a house. It's a Ferrari. It's, it's like three kids college. Like don't, don't think you need to just buy an app. It is insanely expensive. And so here, here's, in that phase, right, as you're growing, I would really like, and, and whether the, there was strategic stuff that you guys were doing, or it, you look back and you go like, here's what we were doing and it worked, you know, because you didn't run advertising, like what were the avenues that people were basically finding you and submitting the info and, you know, let's just call it Legion, like all the different mm -hmm. platforms and strategies the Legion was coming from. And which were like, oh shit, it's happening versus, hey, we're strategic and we're actually doing this to generate leads. Yeah. So looking back, it, it definitely was strategic. It just happened to be like where I wanted to spend my time anyway. Like I was in a ton of Facebook groups, um, probably a little early on where, where it might still work. Like the, a lot of CrossFit groups, mm -hmm. um, a lot of like parent groups, uh, even before I was a parent, um, just in there giving nutrition advice, helping people with questions. Peloton, we basically became like the unofficial Peloton, like nutrition, like partner. And, he, and you know where these people, they buy these Pelotons to help them with fat loss. They're not seeing it. How convenient that a bunch of our members are in the group praising stronger you. <laughs> I go in there. I thank them. Um, a lot of CrossFit gyms I would go to. So early on, I would, I might have a client in a CrossFit gym and I'm like, hey, we can help your whole, your whole crew. We'll give them a discount. So like, I know a lot of the industry is like, discounts are, are stupid. Don't do it. I am on the other side. I think they're great. Um, depending, obviously not all the time, but I would get into CrossFit gyms and I would coach their entire gym. So I could get 10, 20, 30, 50 people from one gym and where these small communities are, like they see one person change that hasn't changed in months. And they're like, yeah. what the hell did you do? Then they tell them about us. We get in there. And then we grow in those pockets too, because they probably know more owners as well. Um, now, maybe that doesn't work that much anymore because everybody's doing nutrition, but these are where I would go. Like, where are the potential struggling people? 
that are kind of warm leads, like ads and things, that's for like, that's cold leads. Those people aren't signing up. I would go where people were in need. So like even like offices, like I would find out where my clients would work. I would say, hey, you work at a big company. Like, can can we get in there and talk to them? We would do webinars. We would do emails. We would do discounts. And then we might get 10, 20, 30 people. And then guess what? All those people have networks too. So we had referral programs. Um, you know, you get five people on the program, you get a free 12 week session. So that was a good incentive. Um, and that, that was it. We just like our Facebook, like you give us good transformation, good story. Can I tag you? Because like coaches will post on their feed and it's like everybody on your feed already knows what you do. You need to get, you need to tag those people and get them to share it. So it shows up on their feed because that's, those are all the people that are like, who the hell is this guy, Mike? And then when they do that, you comment on the post. Someone says, wow, these are great results. You comment, you like, whatever. And I'm not like a, I, I hate like sleaze bag sales stuff. I was just present. I was everywhere. On Mondays, I'm just ranting here, but but on Mondays, that is the that was the busiest day for signups. Why do you think? Because the weekend is when everybody does the stuff that creates the problem for Monday. Maybe they weigh a little bit more. Maybe they have a little bit of guilt or shame around their their pizza and their their wings or whatever they did. So I would just be super present on Monday. I was everywhere on Monday because when I when they saw my name, they thought stronger you, and then they thought like he, that's going to solve my problem. So Mondays were just just crazy for us. Yeah, take take a note on that by the way. Mondays, uh, but yeah. dude, but, nuts. But I, I, nuts. Yeah. The, the thing that you said, though, I, I actually think it's maybe even more relevant now than it used to be. You know, when you talk, because I, I do this content talk um, about how to use content to actually, you know, mm -hmm. build positioning and build your business and whatnot. But I was like, number one, like you're the content, get go do lunch and learns, like do workshops yep. and seminars locally in front mm -hmm. of people. Even if you're an online coach, actually, probably even more likely as your online coach, you can you can meet people in your local community. You could sign up 50 people from your local community for online coaching. That's right, that's but, how I did it early on. I I knew a lot of local CrossFits and like offices, and I did things that were so uncomfortable for me. Like, I get asked every now and then to speak, and I'm like, eh. like I'm I'm like weird about speaking. But at that point, I was like, this is the difference between success and failure. This is the yes. difference between me working a job I hate my whole life or working in an industry I love. So I'm like, fuck it. I'm gonna go talk in front of these twenty people. They're there. They they think I know what the hell I'm talking about. I'm a guy that's up in front of them. Of course, I know what I'm talking about. So like, these are the things I would tell myself and I would just do it. And maybe I get three clients, but next time I did it, some of those same people would be there. And then they would have my back and be like, yeah, this crazy stuff he's talking about, it works. So, Man, I mean, because, the, the, you know, I think that's the courage for people to do. Because now what's what's easier, right? Like I can go type on here yep. it's more comfortable right like it's it and I'm, I'm not against it because i think it's it's obviously useful and powerful but yep. it's like everybody or majority of people skip this dude you have people in front of you i go to the coffee shop right now and i can start a nutrition conversation with you, yep. right like it's straight up because because you know them and you're like oh yeah well what i do is i, I help people with training and nutrition to oh man like you know how many times somebody goes like, oh, I really need to get in. Oh, tell me a little bit more about what you're struggling with, right? Like you just start having a conversation. Yep. And if you go on online, you're just, the voice is, a, a, it's, a, it's a little whisper and you got to build it yep. up over time. But you can be in front of people and it's it, people can hear you and they have these problems. And it's like, I, what I've seen is this shift to like, which platform is the best one for me oh. to be on? Real life, like, well, that's the best one. <laughs> yes, real life. Yeah, <laughs> that's yep. the best answer, though, right? Because everyone could get enough clients in real life to not yes. even worry about online. Like, Man. I used to joke, like, we got we got so many in person that, like, people were like, oh, they're an online business. It's like, well, we find people in real life and serve them online. So, like, how many people does every coach need to to have a financially successful business? 20, 30, 40, like you yeah. can, you can do that in real life. And you can, man, here's the, the funny thing. Look up at your, you know, I'm in Renton, which is Seattle, but it's greater Seattle. Like Renton's 130,000, right? Within, mm -hmm. I don't know, five mile radius, it's a million. And folks that are like, oh, I live in a small town. I said, what's the population? It's like, oh, 14,000, 14,000. If you get 30 clients in the next two months, you can't handle them. 
Right. Just remember that, right? So if you got 30 out of 14,000, which isn't that much, you actually couldn't even handle it. You'd have to spread it out to give them the yeah. service that you need. So now you start going like, oh shit, like that's a little bit of a different framework. Hey, keep keep using your social and build your email. Do all those things, mm -hmm. play the long game, but and, and create value and deliver value. But like tomorrow you could talk to five, 10 people and maybe get one or two strategy session discovery calls and sign folks up, right? And they're, they're right there and you can shake their hand. You can see them next week. Like, hey, Mary, hope you're doing better. How's that? You know, like that's real shit. Like that's how I literally built the gym up because there was no, you know, online and social platforms and all this stuff back then. And it that will forever work. And I actually think it right. becomes more valuable the more that people are afraid to be in front of people. And But, but what I love hearing is like, and you built a company that has tens of thousands of users, but that's how you started building it up. Right. Just local people. Like I had a decent size in-person network that eventually would need my services, which, which I'd argue most people would benefit from what all of us offer. So like, what are we, we're not, what are we afraid of selling? Like they, they have a problem you can solve. So just, they just need to know what you do. That doesn't mean you go up to random people and say, Hey, can I get you in better shape? You just talk to them and everybody in the world asks you what you do because no one else knows what to talk about. They're like, Oh, what do you do? Oh, I'm a, I'm a nutrition guy or I'm a fitness guy or whatever the hell. And then they're like, Oh, I could really use help. Okay, cool. Here's my information. Let's set up a time to talk or get coffee or whatever. And you hey, do let's it. Shine a light every, on that. Dude, every one of these people knows so many other people. Just you become the, the person for them and their crew. It, I want to shine a light on that because so I've, I've, I've onboarded two new coaches, right? And I literally go like, mm -hmm. hey, listen, like if you talk to people for five minutes or 10, there's no way that it doesn't come up what you do, how you help people, yeah. what they're doing. It's, it's, I mean, it would be rare, which means that if every day you talk to five or six people, two or three, you're going to get to the point where it's like, well, you know, I, I coach people and I help them with their nutrition and help them transform. Yeah. And then look, statistically, eight out of those 10 people are not in great shape. They're not feeling good about themselves and they probably need some help. So it's like, it really becomes a connecting with folks, learning more about them, being curious. And the thing is that if anybody listens to this episode, I love that you're saying it because it's almost yeah. like we planned it. Cause I'm like, dude, this is like, I, I constantly yeah, yeah. am pushing people to do this. Right. And whoever is going to be like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to talk to like a hundred people in the next month. Right. You'll that person is going to have success. Yep. And and the thing is, all it takes is to go, you know, get one person you sign up and you go like, holy shit, right? And you get the good feedback loop, boom, let's go. But yep. I love that I'm I'm speaking with you because you built a company that did like 10 million a year. And like to, from that though, right? Versus like, oh, it was, uh, you know, we started and we had this plan and like we got VC investment money so we could really no. push this specific strategy and it's like no it, it wasn't any of that no it was nothing it was it was no investor it was no we had no debt i started it with the, what is the cost of a cell phone like that was where the business started let me let me ask you this so when you when you started hiring coaches did you hire uh straight to like hey you're coming on board full time or was there like you're you're part time and you're going to build up as we give you more clients yeah it was like let's see what happens and my, my, my theory was like, ah, maybe, you know, maybe some of these coaches will make like side money, like 15 grand a year and everything will be cool. And then like we had at a time, we had like 12 coaches making six figures. So like, that was like, that was crazy to me. And I, I'm going to go ahead and say that like at that time, that was un, unheard of. I mean, yeah. and I, I know the history of like, you know, I mean, the JB is a good friend to build PN and so on and so forth. Like I, I know a lot of the behind the scenes of a lot of the companies like that was and still, let's be real, that still isn't something that's a norm or, no, or you know, close to it. These jo like jobs like that, that coaches make that much money don't exist unless you're a successful solo, like entrepreneur. Yeah. So that what was like, be, I was very proud of that, you know? Oh, hell yeah, man. That's, I mean, again, when, even when you say it out loud, I'm like, damn, that's like, very impressive because what would be yeah. like, uh, just on average, how many clients would the coaches have? Um, it all depends. It was, so we had kind of a lot of clients per coach based on like when people hear the numbers, they they're like, Oh my God, there's no way they could have good service. But I'm like, well, 
the company grew without marketing. So, and we have <laughs> world-class NPS scores. So it, I, I proved that wrong, which I, I'm very happy about. Uh, they had hundred, some had 200, um, all dependent on what they could serve properly, you know, and what they wanted to do. Some coaches were just workhorses. They were like, just load me up. And if their clients are happy and referring and successful, like these numbers are irrelevant to me because they're capable of doing it. So it could have been any, I mean, there's some people that just wanted like 30 people. Some people wanted 200. If if they could serve them, they could get them. And it was the, their pay was also dependent on the amount of obviously clients they took on. Yep. Yep. And that was like a, it was a tough call because you don't know whether to like just have people as like paying them salary. And then like, what if the numbers dip and then I have to lay a bunch of people yeah. off and yep. I had to be like an evil businessman. So I'm like, all right, everyone's just going to get paid based on who they service and there was like, you know, there's always talk like, well, what if people don't want to serve them well and they just want a bunch of clients? And I've said, well, that'll course correct because we'll know when their members aren't happy. Yeah. So these are all these are all like questions that come up that I'm like, you know, I think like people looking from the outside think that I didn't know what I was thinking about or doing in this, those situations. But I'm like, I already thought about it because if I did this or that, it would the answer would reveal itself. Mm. So I'm very much like, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So here's why we don't do those things because it doesn't matter. No, th those are good points. And and like, I mean, I, that's what I've found over time too. S salaries can be in certain scenarios, man. It's like a person's yeah. doing well and you get a salary and then they just kind of start coasting. But if somebody's taking on a lot of people, I mean, turnover will tell you whether they're doing a good job too. Right. So right. you're finding that out. But that's, I mean, look, the, the, the reason why I'm asking these questions too is like, I think it's very, very powerful and insightful for people to see, you know, how much, how many people can be coached while doing a great job with it, right? right. You can't, I mean, somebody goes like, that's too many. Okay, says who? Those people are getting results in the company right. group. And you it depends what you're fucking. coaching. Like if you're doing fitness and you're watching videos for 200 people, of course you can't do that. But if you're getting spreadsheets, you're reviewing information and talking throughout the week here and there. It, it, like I had 350 when I quit my job. Ooh. Like that was the, that was the base that built the 50,000. Like, so like I'm a lunatic, right? I'm crazy about my response time. And I had a callus on my finger because I had my phone in my hand at all times, but that's what needed to be done to, to do this, you know? And that that's another great point too. I mean, from somebody that's, that's built it up, I, I can't say this enough, right? If you want to build something special and you want to get to a place where whether whether it's like you retire, or you build a team, whatever else it may be like, the, I love these stories because it's like this is what is required, you know, right. and and today there's just a lot just a lot of like, well, you know, it's important for there to be balance. I'm like, if you want a different type of life, sure. But yeah. not, but not yeah. if you want to build a great company, a great business or even again, if you're a great, so, you know, be a solopreneur. Like to get to a certain level, there's certain things that you need to do. And you have to want to do wanna... those things. Like I didn't feel yeah. like I missed out on life at all. You know? Yeah. Cause it's, was, cause it's like, cause you yeah, were just purposeful it. about it. Yeah. 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 Yep. Exactly. I still went on vacation. I still turned my phone off when I needed to. Like, yeah, it's, I don't know, man. Like it, it is what needs to be done and everyone's talking balance now, but I think that balance has to be earned over time. It has to be earned and too. Like this is it's, this is my always analogy, but I still work with some people who say way too much. But I like I love what I do, and you know, there's I could tell you about a couple. Like I'm working on getting people into roles that I don't think I'm the best for, or that you know take me more of my energy and just spend more time doing the things I'm best at. But at, at the end of the day, you know, if I did something I absolutely hated, it, and you know, you started with that, right? Where it's like, man, I'm doing some shit I hate. Like eight hours of something I hate is going to burn me out way more than like 14, 15 hours or something that I'm right. like, I'm, I'm building and I'm, as I'm building it, there's meaning to it. And I might be tired from it, but I, I'm at the end of the day, I'm like, you know what? I'm empty, but I'm full. Right. And, and I think there's a big difference between that. So like finding that thing that's meaningful that you love doing and you can work harder and actually, and, and your life will be better. Right? It's like, Hey, Oh, I'm working more hours, but my life is better right. than it was before. Um, we, like play. I, yeah. Yeah. And it's, and it's like, it can be hard play, but it's still play. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, if, if you here, here's, here's a question too, because I think this might encapsulate some of your philosophies and principles, right? If next week Mike gets the bug and is like, all right, 
I'm going to build another company in this space or, you know, any related space. It's just like you get excited about mm -hmm. like what, you know, do you do anything different? Like what approach would you take that are almost like, you know, if I had to uh, go like, all right, give me your like, you know, 10 principles of, of, of building a business. Like how would you go about it? I would, I would probably do the same thing. Like I, I think about it right in my head and I'm like, I would have this and I would have that. And I'm like, wait, why would I worry about that? All I, all I care about is having an exceptional product or service and then facilitating the word of mouth spread of that thing. And this is like, maybe, you know, maybe you don't, uh, I'm a part owner of this small pasta shop in town oh, no, and I didn't know that. we do, it's like a one man Dude, show it makes with me love pasta more. Chuck. It's his pasta Chuck. He makes homemade pasta, meatball heroes, um, like tomato caprese sandwiches every day. He, we do like three or four things. We did zero marketing. All we have is a good product. And that's, that's all we're worried about. Like we don't have a phone number. We don't really have a good website. Like it's just good food that spreads and it depends on the, on the systems and the, and the businesses you want. Like if I were to start a software company, of course I would have to do things different, but if I'm offering a service or a product to someone, I'm probably going to do the same, the same things. It'll be a little cleaner. I'll probably have a little bit better data or systems on the back end, but the principles of successful businesses are always going to be the same, like solve a problem for people and charge money. And then don't be stupid with that money. Take care of your staff, take care of your clients and just keep going. But it has to be something I love. And right now, like with the kids, like the little kids, I'm just being dad. I don't have the time to like go all in, which is yep. probably a good thing. Cause I'd probably, cause I like business as a hobby. Like I love listening to business podcasts, all that stuff. So if I were to jump into something, it probably wouldn't be the right thing. So I'm just kind of sitting back, taking it all in, seeing what I am into and then seeing if there's a problem in that area that I can maybe be mm. the person to to solve for somebody. Yeah, actually, that, that was, I'm always intrigued by this, right? Like, what is what are some things right now that you're digging? And I, what I mean by that is like, you know, are you studying some more customer experience stuff? Are you, you know, into marketing and psychology? Like, is there, and by the way, if it's all over the place, cool. I love to hear yeah. that because I'm always intrigued and like, what what is, you know, what's in, uh, intriguing you in your world? Uh, I'm, I, I love just business overall. So I'm always listening to that. Not really like, um, a direct line of business, meaning customer service, marketing, whatever. Like if I read another customer service book, I'll probably lose my mind. Like it's all <laughs> in my head. Like it's all very basic. Um, but I'm like, I'm trying to read novels now because I'm like, I never really read novels. Like even in school, I would like skip. I'd be like, I didn't, I didn't read it. Um, so I'm trying to do that doing the parent stuff. And it's crazy because like, I don't, I don't work right now, but I have so like, my time is just sucked up from being dad. So I don't even really open my mind to explore tons of things because if mm. I find something I love, I won't have the time right now to get into it. So I'm like, you know, everyone's like, life is short. You got to, you know, go all in. I'm like, well, it's a little longer than we talk about. And I'll get to that stuff when like the kids are in school. So I'm just kind of taking it all in and whatever finds me, finds me. And then I'll, I'll act when I can. Cause how, how old are your kids right now? Uh, 23 months and almost four months. Two girls. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah your schedule is packed. Dude. It's, <laughs> I, I don't think anyone knows what it's like to be a parent until you do it because it's, it's insane, man. It's good insane, but it's crazy. <laughs> It's, I stopped saying I used to be like, oh, I can't imagine. So now now I always say yep. I can't imagine, mm -hmm. right? Because all I can hear is the stories, but it's like me and right. my girl, we, you know, hopefully we'll start working on a family next year. Mm -hmm. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm, I got a lot of people on Dow that I'll probably, you know, you'll probably get some texts from me and be like, Mike, I need help. All right. Dude, I, need I, I got it. We, my, my wife is so good at all. It's like, it's, it's basic. Don't, it's just like the fitness stuff. Like don't listen to everybody. Just listen to a few key people and just follow along. And it's, I mean, humans are here today. So we didn't mess it up that bad along the way, man. It was just, just out of curiosity. So stronger use continuing. Uh, it was, it was bought. Is it, has it continued growing? Uh, I don't know the numbers specifically, but I don't, I don't really I don't really know where it is right now. 
I mean, yeah, the thing is, do you, do you ever think about that? Like, just for, from the cool standpoint, I know, like, you know, you're you're, you're kind of you're out. It's like, all right. But looking at it and going like, hey, there's still tens of thousands of people that like are being helped by this thing that I created. Yeah. And that was like when you think of like why why to sell a company, like I thought it would be better in the hands of a much bigger network. So like that was a big driver of the reason. So I hope that ends up happening, you know? Yeah, for sure. I mean, listen, man, that's, I don't know, pretty amazing story. And I think that hopefully what it does for people is like, most of the time when people don't do stuff, I think there's this, um, you know, they create complexity around something, right? Because complexity gives you a, a excuse to not do it, um, you know, yep. but, you know, doing that and building the app, uh, right? But when when you, when, like, I listen to you or when people are listening to you, it's kind of like, okay, man, I think I can do that. It can be done. It can be done. By the way, which is, I think, the biggest compliment, right? That when you build something huge that helps so many people, but you can inspire people to get started on their journey to building something. I, I think that's actually way more powerful than pretending right. like, well, you know, you can never build that. It's really, 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 you know, you can't yeah. figure it out. It's so complex. Like no one can figure it out, but me. You know? Right. Like, it's like, you can, you can do it. You might not have a business as big as stronger you, but there's like, there's gotta be at least a few more thousand people being helped by the coaches that have ended up leaving starting companies and the clients who got inspired to start companies. Yeah. That's like, dope. that's what you, you never know what those, what that reach is. And that's, that's pretty cool to see. Yeah. I think that's awesome, man. By the way, hey, where can people find out uh, more about, about you? I feel like, I feel like some, you might be like, listen, man, I don't want people to find out more. About me. No, I'm a <laughs> dude. I share my stuff. Like it's the, it's the only way, like I'm still connected to the field. It's just like posting on like at Mike yeah, Dole on Instagram Facebook. I'm starting a website, mikedola.com, just so I could write Perfect. stuff and share it. Um, that's it. I post fitness, nutrition stuff. You might see my Lego collection. You'll see my kids. Um, <laughs> I love it. That's it. Yeah. I, I don't have a strict algorithm like beating uh, process. Like I don't know how to do it and I don't feel like trying to beat the algorithm. So I just post whatever. Well, put it this way. I, I'm going to for sure make sure that a lot of people, uh, a lot more people start following you, man, because you yeah. are a wealth of knowledge on both fronts, man. Thank you for this conversation. It was, it was phenomenal. Honestly, man, like to me, it's like, I forget that we're on a, on a podcast. I'm just like, yep. just curious bullshit, and, yeah. yeah, bullshit and curious and intrigued. Yeah. And that's the best, but Hey, listen, if, if for anybody that's listening, if you got a lot out of it, as always, the thing that helps most, cause we don't really do a lot of sponsors or any of that stuff is there to help you share the show, leave a comment, leave a review, uh, make sure you tag Mike, uh, as when you're, uh, sharing it on any of the social media platforms, Appreciate you guys being here, Mike. Thank you for being here. This was awesome, man. And I, I know you. we'll chat it up soon. Yeah, and anyone that has questions, hit me up. Like, I'm happy to help. Oh, yes. Cool. Thanks.